So this is a hopefully quick-ish tutorial covering UI control system inside Touch Designer. This is on the back of a job I just finished for a client where they were looking for a content delivery system for a number of videos uh, that was nice and interactive using a touchscreen that then allowed it to be projected onto a wall. So they supplied a folder of content and asked me to turn it into something sort of that worked. So here we are in a plain touch design window. You'll notice that my frame second is through the floor and that's purely because I have my screen grab running in here in touch designer, which is my screen recording. And so the first point that I knew is that they were sending me a folder of data. So what we need to do is access that folder. So I am not gonna show you their actual work but I'm going to, I've got a sort of a base 360 videos that I downloaded from the internet. So in here, I know there are 11 videos, all in different sort of slightly different file formats, all in slightly different sizes. And no. So the first thing I like to do when I'm using Touch Designer is sort my display. So I'm gonna split it at the top there. I'm gonna change this to be a panel viewer. And I am going to change this to be my text stat. So on the panel here, this is gonna show us what we're working on. I'm just in the first base level, so I'm only down in project. And I've got perform, uh, obviously will be acting as our touch screen. So in project, I'm going to first change the layout of this. So I'm going to set it's a touch screen that is 1920 by 1080. But then I also need to include that our content window is going to be additional to this. It's also a 1920 by 1080. So my width is going to be 3840. And that just means I've got a double wide uh, a double wide container and at the end when we open up perform on all monitors it means that it will open up proje uh, project over everything since i don't actually have that other monitor connected i'm going to change this back to 1920 and we'll simulate the other uh, other monitor using a window that we open and close so i have a folder of data and i need to make a button for each of these videos and then make that button clickable and then load the film that's been selected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly pause, I'm gonna make it a more relevant folder than this one here. So I'm gonna pause the video for a second. So now that I'm back, just let me check that my movie is recording. Uh, I have made a slightly more relevant film. So rather than 360 footage, I simply have a movies folder here and it has five movies as they sent me this is just sort of a bunch of fairly new movie trailers that i managed to download from somewhere uh, so now i have a folder that's telling me i've got five files i need to take these five files make a button for each of them uh, make it load and unload the video and then also make some nice transition between that so that it's a bit more fun than just a few buttons one of the important things with this was that they sent me five demo files and they were like, we may or may not increase the amount of footage that we're going to show. So we'd like it so that it is dynamic, which is something that we can provide in Touch Designer. So whether it's five or 10 or 20 or whatever, we want to make sure that our system can cope. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a container. I'm going to call it buttons. I'm going to make buttons the same as parent.par.height parent.par.width and I have these the wrong way around. So now I have put just a little bit of height in that is saying go to the container above me and get the height and width. But well, we want the height, we don't want the width because we want to put our buttons in a nice middle section so we can surround them by text. Going by that napkin drawing that we saw, we kind of know what that's to look like. 
So I want my buttons to be about 750. And I know I'm going to want them to set uh, parent.par.h divided by 2. Take away me dot par dot h So another little bit of code there that's saying get the height of the container and then get the height of me and then because resolutions are based from the bottom left hand corner and up, we need to go to the it'll go to the half the height and then it'll be our container from there upwards. We then need to take away half so the middle is in the middle basically. So now we have a container of buttons in the middle uh, that we can load stuff into. First thing we're going to want to send is our folder. So I'm going to do a dat in, bring in my folder and go down. And this is where we get dynamic and you'll see how easy it is to get super dynamic adjustable whether we have 5, 10, 15, 100 buttons or movies I'm going to create a replicator my replicator is going to be taste based of my in and then I am going to make a button I'm going to call this master zero and the zero is important because we need a number but we don't want it to be one because that's going to have relevance later uh, I am then going to set this as the master operator and then you will see it will create us five lovely buttons based on the five index in our uh, table in and it will automatically ignore the first row we can turn it off and it would make a sixth but we don't want that because we do want to maintain the name etc and while that's on my head I'm going to go to my folder and I'm going to include the base name and no, I think we could be alright. What do we have? We have its name and then we have its path. Okay, I think we can get away with that. So we'll leave that as is. We'll go back into our buttons. Now, the first thing we want to do is make these look a bit more appealing. So I am going to set this to a width of about 750. Oh, I'm sorry, a height. I'm going to leave. I'm going to change its width to about 750, 500. It doesn't really matter at this stage. Height 550. I want my buttons to be taller than they are wider because I'm going to have like nice strips for the buttons. And then I'm going to recreate them by recreating all operators in my replicator. I'm going to come up to the top level. And inside buttons container, I am going to align them by left to right horizontal and I'm going to add a margin of about 40. I am then going to align them by center. Horizontal alignment we want off. And then I'm also going to keep fit on width. So that means that whatever it does, no matter how many buttons we've got, it is going to make them fit into the space here. And let's say by default they've given us five buttons. Uh, I'm going to open Notepad for some quick maths here. So they gave us five buttons and our screen touch screen is 1920 by 1080. So we need to do 1920 divided by 5. That's 340. And then we also need to take away our margin of 40 between them. So let's say that our buttons are 340 each. Take away 40 margin. They are going to be 340 width per button. Now that's something we can work with as our base to make sure we get our scale right. We could do this mathematically as well, but we just don't need to considering that we have the uh, computer doing all the height management for us. So now it will scale in that order. So now we have nice tall buttons. Uh, I'm also going to disable this here. So I only have five. And they nicely fill that space there. 
So now we click them and they all activate. I'm then going to change this to a momentary button so we only push it once and I'm going to recreate them all. But what you'll notice is we can't see any of them. And that's because we just told master to disable and to be dis not to be displayed and not to be enabled. So we need to change our replicator callback so that every time it creates a button it enables it. And then after that make sure that our master is still disabled. So I'm going to do some quick code here. I'm going to do master is equal to operator master zero dot power dot display is equal to zero. Don't need that part. And then I'm going to do master dot power dot dis display is equal to zero and master dot power dot enable is equal to zero. So we set up a variable to reference this container and then access two of the variables in here which are display and enable. I'm also going to remove this and add one that says c.power.enable equals one. And I'm actually going to put that uh, above the display command just to make sure that it renders in the right order because it will if it tried to display it before it was enabled it can get a bit confused. So testing that I'm going to recreate all. My master is still disabled and it won't let me enable it for now and all my buttons are now momentary. Perfect. As a testing measure I'm going to hash these out which is a comment in Python and I'm going to enable and display my master button which will be the one at the end here as signified by illuminating and I'm going to go inside and edit this. I want to bring in the name of the file that we're loading into the button so I'm going to bring in an in, going to uh, bring in our dat there and then I'm going to attach this into a select and this is where the number in the name of the item becomes important. So in the select we are going to do it by index and we're going to index it by me dot digits. Mm. Uh, no, not me, we're going to do it by parent dot digits. So it's going to go to the topmost file or its parent file and look at the number in its title and then use that to work out its name because each button we're going to use as its reference for uh, a single item. I'm going to paste that in there. So now the master one will display nothing, but if we recreate them all, we should have, so we have one in here that's the Kingsman, we have one here that is cars. So they're all pulling, all, all of the buttons represent a different item now. And what we can do is we're going to play with our font here a bit. I'm going to change the background color and the alpha color. We don't need that stuff. What we want is our text. We are going to make our text equal to, so select. We're going to make it equal to the name of the file, but we want it with, to be the name without the extension. So this is where I was mistaken. We do need something else. So instead of being cars4, we're just going to get the base name. So now we have a column that's base name minus its extension. So inside buttons master0, I can set the text of this equal to a little bit of Python code, which is op operator select2. So let's select that over here. Dot, not dot, dot, it's a table, so I'm going to open square brackets. It is in row zero in column one. So now this should say, oh, change this to, should say base name. I'm also going to change its font to be a polygon. And then I am going to auto fit it to large and change its size to about 15. Give me a left bottom alignment. Just, I just prefer it this way. And then I'm going to give that text a quick background. So I am going to do a. I'm 
going to do a ramp. I'm going to change it to horizontal. And then we want to do... What I'm going to do is I want to make this fade from black to white. So I'm going to select the white. Change its alpha down to nothing. Change its value down to nothing. And then bring this black along here so it's a nice, nice fade. There. I am going to add in a composite. And I am going to put this ramp under this <coughs> the top. Compound transform. Fixed layer is number one. Under. It's perfect. And then I am also going to insert transform. change this to be attach a null onto that. And I'm going to come to the top level, change the background of my master to null one. And then I'm going to recreate them all. So now if I full screen this you should see their names there. And the reason they're all still pure white underneath is because we turned the transparency all the way down. To fix that Let's add another layer that is going to be our button background that we will eventually replace with a thumbnail. So I'm going to add a constant and add another composite. Maybe. Oh, it's all the way up there. And then instead of multiply, we want that to be under. And then let's make this a random color. So just on execute, on create, I'm going to edit the code in here. I'm going to do on create uh, const is equal to op operator constant one dot par. And then we are going to do, I'm going to import random. So this is going to import our man, random module for me. Uh, and then we want to create a floating number between zero and one for each color. So every time it's going to randomly create a value for us here. So if we do r is equal to random dot, dot uniform zero one print r and because I've got this happening on creation I need to cut and then paste it see if it prints a value that is a float yes so the print command here simply just printed that into the text board and since we've got that I know that's working so now I can copy and paste this for r g and b get rid of my print text g B. And then I need to set my constpar dot color r is equal to r constpar dot color g is equal to g const dot par dot color dot b is equal to b. Now if I scroll out refresh all, we will get buttons that are random colors every time. And this is just a nice way of visualizing how your uh, how it works with lots of different colored icons in the background. And on the test here I can see that all these texts are different sizes. That's because I did put on resize if not resize it too big. But we also want to enable the beauty of word wrap. And you'll see that all of my uh, all of my edits are happening in master purely because that is how the replicator works. 
So now all my text will stay the same size and wrap around and then push it up. So it just gives us a much nicer looking, uh, nicer looking system. I'm going to change the colour of my text actually because it only goes white when it's selected but we want to adjust that. So inside base or my master button I'm going to edit the colour text port. And in the off state, I'm going to change font to 0 0.9. And in the on state, I'm going to change it to 1. So recreating all of them. You'll see that my text is much brighter. And then on rollover, it goes darker. But since this is for a touch screen, we won't actually ever experience that. And clicking it will still give us that satisfying change in color. So I am OK with that. last place we finished off is that we had just created the buttons and each of the buttons was generating a file or generating a name based on its file. Next thing we need to do is work out which video to actually play based on that initial list and we can do this a, a smart way so we know that we're making as many buttons as there are items and we're referring to the name of that item based on its index hence why we started. So the list index always starts at zero because that's just how arrays work in computing. And we made our master, master zero, to make, take that out of the equation. So we know that each of these buttons relates to an item. So if it's pressed, we know that there's a video to load. So what we can do is we can take this here, which is the button that triggers when it's pressed, the uh, out on the end of the select of the panel, and we can make something happen. So we can go dat chop execute off to on, open the text port. Just gonna close all these other ones because they are just in the way. Off to on, and we can say op, first let's make a place to catch it. So in the top level here, I'm gonna make a constant I'm going to call this selected. So all we need to do is make op dot dot slash. So the dot dot refers to going back up one level in the hierarchy. So in the buttons container rather than in master constant dot par dot value zero that's how you reference the values in a constant is equal to uh, parents dot digits so what this is saying is if I am clicked so if this is clicked and that is not correct parents is not defined parent if I am clicked uh, so basically if I go to one then make constants above me equal to the number that I am in my parent. Line 12, off to on, none type has no object par. because it's not called constant, it is called selected. So now it should appear that nothing happens, but if we launch our replicator, the button will change from left to right. So it always goes first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then this will do zero because that's our master that we don't are meant to have enabled. We can reference back to, so number five is Thor Ragnarok teaser trailer. And in our folder, number five is also Thor Ragnarok teaser trailer. So all I need to do now is put number five into the movie file in. And the easiest way to do that is if I bring a select out of this in. You can do this all with code, but this way is much more visual for a tutorial style. Do select. And then I want to do do it by index, make it equal to a relative reference of this chop, a relative reference of this chop, 
So you should see the select changes to be the exact number it needs to. And then all I need to do is tell this movie file, instead of loading a file, you can load a, a message by uh, Python. The very last column in our folder structure is the exact path we need. So all I need to do is reference row zero, column two. So it would be, let's call this movie to play. Movie to play. Dot par, oh, not dot par, I always make this make with tables. Zero, two, as I just said to you. So now, every time I click a button, it will switch to that pilot. Obviously, zero does nothing because there is no zero. That's just our test button. I am then going to add a chop audio movie. And add that, so now that any audio that came with the movie is playing in sequence with the movie. And I mean, as a base goes, we could plug this in and it would be good to go. We have five buttons that select five different videos and then play them. So now that we've got the buttons loading and playing the relevant video, what I want to do is make an icon for each of the buttons based on the video itself. Normally, I would just have my UI designer make me up some icons, but there is a way we can do this in real time in touch as well. And depending on the sort of thing you're doing and how you're actually doing it, this can be super intensive and maybe not actually the correct way to go about it. But Let's have a look. So in master, we're already narrowing down to what the name of the file is. So why don't we include another movie file in, make it reference, what did we just agree? It was zero and then two to reference the exact file path. So if we do op selected, or select two, sorry, zero, two, this will fail, but then we can replace this constant with this. And then instead of, if we go to image zero, when there's nothing to load, recreate all. So it should now pick a section of each movie. But the crop is slightly off because it's fitting the full X and the full width of the movie into the button. Because my master file doesn't actually reference anything, when I do any development here, I'm going to do it inside my item. Now execute will fail because the constant doesn't actually exist anymore. So now I'm working directly inside the Cars 3 trailer, so I'm working on the first one here we can watch and I want to scale it so it is in perfect sync with the width so we want to insert a crop and what we want to do is we want to bring in the left bit and bring in the right a bit so it's nice and square so what is our button width our button is 340 by 550 which makes it so we have 340 by 550 our screen is 1920 by or sorry our buttons is 1920 by 750 and we want to work out the scale between those two so mm, 340 divided by 1920 is 20, it's almost a quarter, so it's 26%. And 550 is 
is 70, let's say 75% of the height. So what we need to do is we need to tell our crop to be equal to half of 26, half of 25 on either side. So each crop needs to be 12.5 and each height crop needs to be 12.5. Actually that's worked out fairly well if we just round the numbers. So that means our left crop is going to be 0 0.125 and our right crop is 0 0.125. Our top crop is 0 0.125 and our bottom crop is 0 0.125. Now that won't work, sadly, because crops work on a 0 to 1 basis. So we need to take 0.125 away from 1. 1 take away 0.125 is 0.875. And our top and bottom are the exact same, 0.875. So all things going smoothly, that should give us a an in ratio button or crop on our button. Now it might not be quite perfect because obviously we have our container is applying a a transform to this as well, but it should get us close enough that it will look fine on the UI. So I'm gonna copy these here and put them into my master. And then I'm going to reload all. And then I'm going to re-enable my master stretch here. Replicate. So now, thanks to that ramp, we can still see the name of the movie on top of the button. And then we can then click to select each of them and it will play. The crop is a bit funky, so you can play about with that depending on yours. So now I've got all these movies playing. I need to work out, I need to work out a way to show people what is actually playing rather than what's just on the screen. So we are going to add another layer. Sadly, I need to re-enable my master. And I am going to make it so. Uh, we need to add another composite. And this composite is going to have a, let's do a constant. Mm -hmm. Is that what we want? Let's see. Let's do a nice red over the top. Plug that in. And we can probably get away with that. So we want to do a quick check that I'm going to bring in I'm going to bring in selected to each of the buttons and then I'm going to check whether selected is my own button. If it is, I am then going to add the red hue chop execute and instead of off to on we want value change and uh, check if button and then in value change I am going to do if val is equal to parent dot digits 
and then do op constant one dot par dot alpha alpha is equal to one or point five zero point five else op constant is equal to zero so what that's saying is if we go out and we want alpha to be zero by default turn this off turn this off Why are none of my buttons appearing? Oh, it's because this is not correct. We want, uh, what do we want, over? Under? Yes, I think we want under instead. So you know the drill. Change it in master. This comp to under. Recreate all. So now the one that is selected has a red hue to it. Beautiful. So whereas this is going to out this and I'm going to out this so I get my audio and my video so now I can click this into my audio device out what is this about uh, and then I can put this into a no Obviously, because I'm recording it, not really agreeing with it. And then I would just, for the sake of this, I would put this to a window. Operator, single output monitor, fill location, open. And then I could be presenting that while having my UI work at the same time. <laughs> 